اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم یلد ولم یولد ولم یکن له کفوا احد صدق الله العظیم yes you can uh, welcome all of you to the province of sindh and to its capital karachi uh, i guess we'd start with the introductory remarks by mr irfan chokat um, thank you very much sir as i'm irfan chokat director of program at foreign service academy islamabad on behalf of the uh, foreign service academy and the participant of this uh, 28 junior diplomatic course i would like to thank you for receiving us and for the warm hospitality extended to us by the administration of the karachi so the foreign service academy as part of its outreach efforts every year invites the diplomat from different countries to showcase them different aspects of pakistan so that they can uh, see by themselves the diversified culture and traditions of different provinces of pakistan so this year also we have invited uh, 18 diplomats from 12 different countries spanning in three continents who will spend Uh, six weeks with us as part of our uh, country uh, tour uh, we have visited lahore and now we are visiting karachi we arrived here yesterday and we have started our official visit by laying the wreath at the mezari kaid and for, uh, we during the three days stay we will now visit some industrial complexes and different departments so that they can have the first hand information and knowledge about the diversified culture traditions and various aspect of the pakistani society So, sir, thank you again, once again, uh, thank you for the warm hospitality extended to us, and uh, uh, for the receiving us the delegation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Irfan sir. I'll start off by, you know, quickly asking uh, my colleagues to introduce themselves. I'm, I'm Murad Ali Shah. I'm the Chief Minister Sin. Sharjil, if you can. Sharjil Maimon, I'm Minister of Information and Transport. I'm Kasim Naveed Kamar, uh, I'm the Special Assistant for Investments and Public-Private Partnerships in the province of Sindh. Ghulam Nabi, Inspector General of Police. Sweet. Hello, yeah, I'm Ibrahim Job from the Republic of the Gambia. I work with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, International okay. Cooperation on Gambians Abroad. Thank you for having us. Hello, I'm Claude Marcia Yao from Cote d'Ivoire. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Mehran Umar. I come from Djibouti. Thank you for your hospitality. Good morning. My name is Fadika Mariam from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Cote d'Ivoire. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Eklou Tata from Togo, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Department of Defense and Security Affairs. Thank you. My name is Hongo Ambura. I come from United Republic of Tanzania. I'm working with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Department of Asia and Australia. Asia. Thank you for your hospitality. Hello, um, my name is Jolene Seke. I come from Solomon Islands. I work for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and External Trade. Thank you for hosp your hospitality. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, Kairat. I'm from Kazakhstan. I'm glad to be in uh, Karachi in Sint province. Thank you for your hospitality. Hello, I'm Abdul Wahid Afoda from Togo, working with uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs at the uh, International Cooperation Department. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Chief Minister. My name is Maestro Tomwa. I am from the island of Samoa, working at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Thank you for having us today. Good morning. My name is Sonay Özmen from Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. I'm working at Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Consular Section. Thank you. Good morning. I'm James Makaj from the Republic of South Sudan. I'm working in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Good morning, I'm Elizabeth Guevara from Nicaragua. I work at the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Good morning, my name is Sardar Durkan uh, from Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Yashar from North Cyprus. Thank you for receiving us. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
My name is Nambaira Azena from Uganda, working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Consular Department. Thanks a lot for inviting us today here. Hello, my name is Bagda Gulja Paralina. I'm from Kazakhstan. Thank you for having us today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Salma Raja Baraka from Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and East Africa Corporation. I'm from United Republic of Tanzania. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Kashif and I'm working here as Deputy Secretary. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Abdul Rahim Sheikh, Secretary of the Secretary. Uh, Dr. Saeed Amman, Home Secretary, Government of Sindh. My name is Hassan Nakhvi and I'm Chairman, Planning and Development Board, Government of Sindh. I am Sohail Rajput. I am Chief Secretary, Government of Sin. Thank you very much. And once again, I welcome you to the province of Sin and its capital, Karachi. Um, what I'll do is try in the next five to ten minutes just talk about the province of Sin, the government of Sin, the initiatives that we're taking, and also you know touch on the recent floods that we've experienced in the country and especially in the province of Sin. Uh, you've come to uh, Sin, you've come to Karachi, the capital. We are proud. Uh, Pakistan came into being as a Muslim country and uh, Islam in this region came into, uh, Islam came into this region through the province of Sin and we are very proud of this. On top of this, when uh, the Pakistan, when the country Pakistan was created by our founding fathers. Sindh Assembly was the first assembly to pass a resolution for creation of Pakistan. And so in that matter, we also are proud that we consider ourselves as the creators of Pakistan. The province of Sindh has always been a cradle of peace. We are the known as the land of Sufis and the land of mystics. Uh, we've had our problems, and especially starting the decade of the 80s, we had very serious law and order issues in the province of Sindh, where both our urban areas and our rural areas were hit by lawlessness. And this continued till about the middle of the last decade until about 2013-14, and since then, and I'll just tell you, in 2013, Karachi was ranked as the seventh most dangerous city in the world uh, by the grace of Almighty Allah, with the sacrifices of our uh, police services, the law enforcement agencies, the intelligence agencies, the resolve of the political government, we've been able to bring peace into this province and especially to the city. We used to have almost a terrorism incident on a daily basis in Karachi. And now, uh, you know, what we are worried about is the street crime or the petty crime in the city and which in a city of more than 20 million people uh, would always be a problem. So from the seventh most dangerous city in the world, we are now, uh, there's some ranking which is done and we are more than 128 or some we are improving every day and uh, with the revival of peace in the province the present provincial government of Sindh which is led by the Pakistan People's Party and most recently in 2008 the Pakistan People's Party won the elections in the country and in the province of Sindh and since 2008 uh, we've had three successive governments by the Pakistan People's Party, and uh, we've tried to economically revive this province. And I'll just talk about two or three very brief, uh, very briefly, two or three initiatives that we've done. First of all, I've got my the Minister for Investment and uh, the Minister in Charge for the Public Private Partnership Unit. We've got a very successful a public private partnership unit. We were the first province in the country which framed a law for public private partnerships, knowing that we would not have the resources in the public sector to come up to the expectations of the people for development. 
So a public-private partnership came into being in 2009, 2010. We've got the, we had the law in 2010, and as I told you, it's the most successful uh, unit in the country, and it has been internationally recognized. The Economist magazine has ranked the public-private partnership uh, initiative in Sindh as the sixth best in Asia. And uh, we are one of the only two provinces, the subnational governments, who have been ranked along with sovereign states. And uh, I'll just give an example. Sindh is ranked sixth. Pakistan is ranked at number one. This was a couple of years ago. I'm sure we've improved since then. Pakistan was ranked at number 12. What we've done in public-private partnership is not only done infrastructure projects like roads, uh, bridges, but we've also gone into the power plants. We've also gone into the service sector, and we've got, uh, a, under the Public-Private Partnership Act, uh, we have educational institutions and health facilities where the government uh, brings in the resources and we use the private sector to manage and run these institutions and it has been very successful. Second, I'd want to talk about our uh, third coal uh, reserves and how we've um, been able to add to national economy. We, uh, the, you know, one of the greatest problems that we have is uh, the lack of energy, the lack of power. And uh, even now, majority of our Energy is through imported oil or imported coal at the moment. We have the sixth largest coal reserves in the district of Tharparkar in Sin. Uh, and uh, the coal reserves were discovered in 1992 during the government of uh, late Prime Minister Shahid Motarma Benazir Bhutto. Uh, the Thar Coal Initiative was started at that time uh, two power plants were being built, but unfortunately the subsequent governments put those uh, on the back burner. And when the Pakistan People's Party government came back into power in 2008, we revived the Thar Coal project, and at this point in time, uh, we've got almost 2,600 megawatts. The last 13 and 20 megawatts would come on board in uh, the first quarter next year and we are positively contributing towards the energy uh, requirements of the country and uh, we are now one of the lowest uh, least cost energy producers in pakistan and the province of sindh is contributing towards national economy in this way in this manner not only uh, coal, the province of Sindh has also got the largest gas reserves in the country. More than 70%, almost 70% of gas reserves of the country are from the province of Sindh. So, you know, we call ourselves the energy basket of Pakistan. On the renewable sides, uh, we've got uh, the uh, wind corridor in Sindh, which has a potential of uh, producing 50,000 megawatts of wind energy. And at this point in time, we've got almost 2,000 megawatts in operation, 1,600 16. 16 megawatts in operation in the province of Sindh. And there's several other projects. So we, apart from fossil fuel, we're also looking at clean energy. We've got the potential for uh, solar parks, and we are currently uh, focusing on uh, creating not only rooftop solar projects for the residents of Sindh, but large solar parks in this province. The last thing that I'd want to talk about is uh, the government's uh, uh, initiative of uh, improving tertiary health. And uh, we've, I'll, I'll just mention a couple of hospitals that uh, were in previously the, you know, with the federal government, the National Institute of Cardiovascular Disease, uh, which was the premier the heart hospital in this country was with the federal government until 2012. We took it over and we've turned it around and uh, this NICVD now has uh, nine branches in the province. Apart from that, we've got uh, more than 20, almost 25 chest pain units in the province. And uh, the hospital in Karachi does the largest number of 
primary angioplasty is under one roof anywhere in the world and they're done, all are done free of cost. The other institute that I'd want to talk about is the Jinnah Hospital or the Jinnah Postgraduate Medical Center, uh, which again was with the federal government until 2012 after devolution, we took it over. We still had some, now it's been finally been resolved, some issues with the federal government in terms of control of these hospitals. But the government of Sindh, along with the private sector, invested very heavily on this hospital and we've got uh, state-of-art facilities in this hospital. I'll just like to talk about uh, uh, cancer facilities in this hospital, especially the radiation part. We've got two cyber knife uh, machines in this hospital which uh, treats cancer and uh, the only, if I remember correctly, 22 or 23 countries in the world which has this facility. In Pakistan, the province of Sindh is the uh, only province which has this in either the public or the private sector. And again, uh, treatments are done. We treat 24, we, do, we can do 24 procedures a day on these machines. We've got two of them and they are done free of cost. And uh, just to give you an idea, a treatment, you know, you can have a dozen treatments under this. One treatment plan, plan uh, cost anywhere between 60000 to to $100,000 anywhere else in the world. And the government of Sindh does this free of cost. And uh, the last hospital that we want to talk about going out of Karachi, uh, there's a small town. Uh, in the north of Sindh, north central part of Sindh, the, in the district of Khairpur, the town is called Gambat. And it's got a hospital called the Gambat Institute of Medical Sciences, which has done more liver transplants than any other hospital in Pakistan. And uh, this is a very small town, you wouldn't even know about it, but it's, uh, and the government of Sindh has recently, what we've done is we've uh, designated the town of Gambat as a health city because in this Gambat Institute of Medical Sciences, they do liver transplants, they do kidney transplants, they do cornea transplants, and uh, they uh, now have a cardiac facility which is equal to the NICVD. We've got, they are working on a cancer hospital in this, uh, in this institute. So these are sort of some success stories that we had. Lastly, I'll very briefly touch on the floods. Unfortunately, we had uh, the worst flood in Pakistan uh, that you know, we've experienced or this region has experienced in uh, the last monsoon in 2022, starting from July. We had almost 11 times the average rain in the province. And because of that, there was huge inundation. 24 of our districts were affected. We lost almost 800 lives, and majority of them uh, were children and uh, women and children. Uh, we've had 1.8 million houses which have been either partially or fully damaged. Uh, we've had at uh, you know, we've got 3.7 million acres of agricultural land you know, with standing crops destroyed. Uh, we are grateful to uh, the international community for helping us during these difficult times. Uh, a lot of aid did come in and we are planning a donors conference in the month of January and we're hoping that uh, we'd be able to get help from the international community for rehabilitation because our irrigation network has been severely damaged, our road network has been severely damaged, and most of all, I told you, 1.8 million houses, and we need to help the people rebuild these houses. Um, we've uh, tried to uh, do our best during the relief operations. Uh, 10 cities were made, uh, almost six million people's, people were left homeless. Uh, the grace of Almighty Allah, we've been able to evacuate 80% of the 
of the inundated areas, but still 15 to 20 percent are uh, left. And uh, as I said, you know, we've had floods in the past, but this one uh, was uh, the, the the quantum of this flood was uh, far more than any of the three previous floods that I've seen in the recent past, starting 2010. Um, and so you know, we are in the process of rehabilitation, and this is a difficult time for our province, uh, but we have the resolve to make sure that we rehabilitate each and every person in this province which has been disturbed by the floods. Uh, what I guess we're going to do is have brief presentations from us, and you, you're going to present, uh, but make it very brief so that we can have time for questions uh, before uh, we disperse. I said, uh, so uh, just uh, a brief uh, comments. Continuing from what Chief Minister was mentioning, I think since we have all the diplomats sitting here, this climate change, because you are sitting here in Sindh, which has witnessed the one of the gravest manifestation of what catastrophe can come through the climate change and uh, the policies which have been made by the developed world for using the fossil fuel for energy. Now the effect are being witnessed in the south. The development happened in the north, but effects are being witnessed in south. And since Sin has shown to the world that how the policies which have happened over the last couple of centuries are now affecting the environment and the climate. And for this, I think we need to have a global response because you can't segregate the environment or climate from one country to another. Uh, you have the borders which are there, but the climate we all share with each other. So whatever one country does affects the another country. So at global level, I think there has to be global diplomacy because unless we have a unified un uh, global response to this, we will not be able to uh, uh, address this issue of the climate change. The recent event at Sharm El Sheikh, COP27, I think the one good thing which has happened is uh, establishment of loss and damage funds. And Pakistan took the lead in that. And as diplomats, I think we shall take this idea forward and try to get this fund established as soon as possible so that the developing countries, which are the major affectives of this global phenomena, shall get some relief through the resources which the developed world has. Thank you. Next, please. So this has been our development strategy. Our priorities have uh, always been uh, mostly in this sequence. Education has always received a top priority in our spendings. And as CM Saab mentioned, we have worked a lot on uh, improving our health facilities. So this also figures in our development strategy. Then again, increasing agricultural productivity, providing safe drinking water, and then definitely improving mass transit systems for major cities of the province. And again, a nutrition support and community infrastructures. Next, please. So this is how we spend our uh, uh, our budgets and our development portfolio is uh, aligned uh, like this. We have a total allocation of around 330 billion rupees, which amounts to around 1.5 trillion dollars. And uh, this year around this has been increased to 459 billion rupees, which is almost two trillion uh, dollars. Uh, but next please. Uh, we spend most of our uh, development budget on the ongoing schemes which we have started in previous years. Uh, we try to restrict ourselves on account of the new schemes which are to be taken up the, in the current year. Next year, next please. So as you can see in this pie chart, our major spendings go towards improving road network. And as far as education and health are concerned, our spendings are uh, uh, also uh, being done through non-development budget or recurrent budget, so that's why you see a smaller percentage here. But it does not mean that we are spending less on education or health. 
next please we are also a recipient of uh, loans from uh, international donors we have uh, almost 21 ongoing projects around amounting to 330 billion rupees uh, or 1.5 trillion dollars this year uh, after the emergence of floods and this emergency we have been able to uh, almost double this amount and we have commitments of another around 1300 million dollars or 1.3 billion dollars from the donor agency so our uh, loans and development portfolio on account of donor financing would be reaching up to around three trillion dollars next please now this entire development spending has turned uh, upside down because of the emergence of floods as you can see and as chief secretary sahab mentioned uh, pakistan has been worse hit by this climate uh, emergency um, although we are contributing or hardly 0.8 percent to global carbon uh, footprint but Pakistan is ranked amongst the top 10 countries uh, devastated by environment emergency. So as you can see right from 2010 up to 2022 we have been faced with the riverine floods. Uh, in 2022 recent floods which have been the largest in terms of quantum and magnitude um, in, in comparison to previous years. Next please. So out of 29 districts, 23 districts of the entire province have been uh, calamity hit and they have been worsted by the floods and almost 1.8 million houses have been damaged. Lives lost, as mentioned earlier, is around 800 people. Next, please. This is how uh, the relief activities were taken up by the government of Sindh. And they are still ongoing and this is a massive activity which was primarily taken up by government of Sindh through its own resources. Next, please. Now, this is uh, to give you some measure of the damages. And this is how we will portray our case in upcoming uh, donors conference, which is supposed to be held in mid of January. The housing damages are 55% or largest in terms of quantum. And uh, 20,000 of our schools have been damaged out of a total number of 40,000. Road network has been damaged and our irrigation dam uh, network has faced a huge damage. Next, please. Now, to sum it all, uh, um, this flood emergency has caused a uh, loss of around 4.8% of GDP at the start of the year. Uh, the GDP prediction was uh, on the higher side, but we estimate that it would go down at least by 4.8%. And this has been assessed by post-disaster need assessment, which was done by federal government. And uh, next, please. We expect that poverty in Sen would be increased by 8.9 and 9 percentage points, and, and almost 9 million people would be added below poverty line. Next, please. Now, this is the plan which, which we have drafted for our, our rehabilitation uh, in post-flood scenario. Uh, the resources from international donors and provincial government, they have all been combined. And uh, there is a huge financing gap, gap of around $6.3 billion. As assessed by the disaster need assessment, the entire damage amounts to around $7.8 eight billion dollars, one point three billion dollars is coming from donor agency. So this huge financing gap of around six point three billion dollars would be pitched to the international donors through donors conference so that we can uh, complete this financing gap. Next please. Uh, the city of Karachi being the big metropolis Port City re receives uh, importance from provincial government and these are major projects which have been taken up by the provincial government. These are for improvement of uh, uh, its open spaces, its infrastructure, water and sewage system, and its solid waste management system. Again, we have few major projects on our transportation sectors which are already under execution. Next, please. As mentioned by Chief Minister Saab, we have already taken some uh, major projects in public-private partnership, and uh, public-private partnership has been a success story in the province of Sen. Thank you.
Any questions, Shogun sir? Uh, Aisha, do you want to add some yeah, questions? I think that, but, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Chief Minister, for a brief presentation. Uh, my question will go directly to Planning and Development Department. I saw in his presentation about the pro budget projections of health and education, they were less low. I, I just want to know what is the percentage literacy rate in, in the region? And why is it that the percentage of health is two or three percent before than another? What, what does it project to the health sector? As I mentioned uh, in, in my presentation that health and education uh, do get a top priority in our budgetary allocations. And uh, uh, for last so many years, we have been able to complete our projects in health and education, especially uh, in tertiary health. Uh, we have also combined the, the services of private sector and through our public-private partnerships. So our tertiary healthcare system is in very good state in uh, comparison with the rest of the, uh, the country. Uh, as far as this uh, rehabilitation effort is concerned, we have been able to uh, repurpose some of the amount from our uh, ongoing projects and uh, reallocating some amount from our new projects so that we can subsidize and finance our rehabilitation effort. But it's still the amount is far too much for rehabilitation effort and reconstruction effort uh, to be taken care of by the provincial government itself. So that's why we are looking forward uh, to donor agencies and international agencies to come up and finance our uh, development needs. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my question is regarding the poverty, the increment in poverty line. I, during the presentations, I saw something like that from seven point something to nine, that the poverty is increasing. So is there any strategic plan to counter attack base? Because we all know poverty is related to social crimes and other things. Um, it is. It has been estimated that around 20, 22% of the entire population of uh, the uh, country is living under poverty line. But uh, the emergence of COVID added a uh, substantial number. If 22.5% of the entire population, uh, a population of around 2 million was added. Now with this emergence of flood, another 9 million people have been added to, to the number of uh, people living below the poverty line. Uh, the best thing that the government can do is to provide enabling in the environment for economic regeneration and economic activity. So our first priority is definitely to build our infrastructure to previous position. And uh, since Pakistan and uh, Sindh itself is, uh, an, has an agro-based industry, so we are focused on uh, the upcoming uh, winter season, winter sowing season, in which the government is providing huge subsidies to the farmers so that their agriculture gets into good position. Our wheat crop is not affected, and we have a semblance of food security as well. Apart from this, we already have a poverty elevation program. Uh, in which we provide microfinance, small loans to uh, the people who have been living under the poverty line. Uh, we have enterprise development fund which provides similar sort of facility business opportunities. Um, so these activities are being sped up. We have been fast-tracked with the help of donor agencies. Uh, we have some commitments regarding a few programs related to poverty elevation. That's how we are addressing it. Thank you. 
Uh, we know a lot about the security issues in the region, and I would like to know how it does it affect your general budget. Thank you. Do you want to I'll, I'll Just quickly, and then I'll ask the IG also, Inspector General, to talk about the security situation. After education and health, the third um, area that we uh, sort of spend the most money in our budget is security um, to maintain law and order. We, as I told you, you know, we had very bad times and the uh, last decade, the first half of the last decade was especially uh, problematic. What we've done since then, though we, you know, we've been increasing the police budget and the security budget every year, and uh, in recent times, uh, what we've done is the special specialty areas, for example, the counterterrorism department, we're investing a lot to build its capacity. The special branch, which is our intelligence uh, side of the police, we are building its capacity, giving it more uh, modern and uh, technology devices. So, you know, uh, it is having a large impact, but it is necessary because unless we are able to uh, maintain law and order, give uh, comfort to our residents, to our citizens, uh, we would not be able to uh, do better on the development side or on the economic side. So you know, that's my reply. I'll also ask the Inspector General to add to it. Uh, definitely uh, security has a large impact on uh, development of any area because the foreign investors, the local investors, they do believe that the, if there's a security, then uh, they feel that uh, their investment is safe. So the government is uh, uh, very cognizant about uh, creating such an environment that uh, not only security is ensured, but the sense of security should prevail. Uh, we are very mindful to uh, invest uh, in uh, the projects which can uh, create such security environment. Like uh, uh, internationally, as uh, Chief Minister Saab has already told you that we have a now problem of uh, 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 street crime, especially in Karachi. Uh, we are going a project with the e-tag. The e-tagging is now very popular in America, in Europe, and even Gulf countries uh, where the repeat criminals, uh, they are being tagged uh, so that uh, their uh, surveillance is being carried out. We are very heavy uh, on uh, narcotics parallels but because we do believe that uh, uh, narcotics, the area where uh, it is, it has a nexus with the terrorism, it's a nexus with the crime. So uh, we have a uh, lot of initiatives with reference to the re rehabilitation. We have initiatives that uh, we want to control this menace. Uh, besides, uh, uh, we are going for uh, uh, safe city projects, uh, the first initiative, we have a 40 toll plazas over uh, across the province. We want to have a smart cameras there so that we can restrict uh, the movement of uh, criminals. We have a very good initiative with reference to uh, hotel I, with reference to travel I. We keep on a watch on our criminals so that we can detect their movement and uh, uh, having their apprehension at, as early as possible. We have also a mechanism that uh, we give incentive to criminals, uh, we give incentive to the uh, public and the police uh, for uh, 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 notifying uh, for the hardened criminals to have uh, uh, their uh, apprehension money. Uh, there are certain uh, uh, criminals, they have been already notified and a few are in process. So I think uh, as uh, you see, uh, you Google it, uh, we had uh, some security problem few, few years back, but now uh, the uh, security situation of uh, uh, cities, especially Karachi, which used to be the uh, worst, uh, having worst law and order in a crime situation, now it's a better than the most of the regional cities like Delhi, like um, Kuala Lumpur, like Dhaka, it's a better than uh, these cities. Thank you. Thank you very much for the questions uh, and the explanation you give us. 
Uh, I have two questions, and if you permit, one comment. Uh, the first question is related to the energy. Because in the first presentation, you mentioned that you import in order to compensate the supply of uh, energy. And I heard uh, talking about coal. So uh, my questions uh, is regarding the environmental dimension of uh, using of coal. Because we all know that as you uh, presented in the presentation that uh, Pakistan has been affected uh, recently by the flood and we know all that it is due to what we know about the climate change and so on. So is there any policy as far as the you know, fight against greenhouse effects because you're still using coal and you have been victim to the climate and uh, the environment? This is the first question, if you allow me to go to the... Uh, through the presentation, when you <clears throat> give us the, uh, the budget, I see that you have a focus on the road network with a very huge percentage. So I would like to know if the budget is namely from the government of Pakistan or you have some support abroad, because I see that it's very huge, the road infrastructure you have uh, I want to know if you have a, a very precise partnership in terms of uh, road infrastructures. So if you permit to go to the comment. Okay, <laughs> for the comment, uh, well, I just want to uh, express my gratitude to the hospitality, first of all. Uh, I should confess that before coming to Pakistan, when I uh, told people that we are coming to Pakistan. Hey, Pakistan, you heard what happened to Pakistan? There are flood, there are this and that and so on. But I'm very impressed by the management of the catastrophe. And we, uh, you know, we are very impressed because it means that you have a good team of management of crisis. And we present our condolences to the victims, especially for the damages are very huge and still you have a very good management. So I want to thank you on that. Thank you. Let's start with the end. You know, thank you very much for the compliment. And, uh, you know, it was a huge challenge. And uh, there were times when, uh, in the month of September especially, when uh, we thought everything would break down and we would not be able to uh, do this. But I'm grateful to the support that we got, especially from the flood affectees who cooperated, uh, they had the most difficult time and I'd give them most of the credit for being able to sustain these very difficult times. But we still have a long way to go for rehabilitation and uh, we need to keep that resolved. The first question I will answer, yes, you know, we are very, we are aware of the environmental effects. So f first of all, the power projects that we are setting up in Thar Parker, uh, we are making sure that we not only follow the very stringent guidelines of the World Bank, uh, and uh, apart from that, all guidelines for safe uh, environment, environmentally safe uh, production of power for coal is being observed in Thar Parker. Uh, I'm not saying that, obvi you know, obviously it's not the most preferred uh, fuel at this point in time, but the options that we have, because apart from that, all, you know, we've got some hydro production, but a majority, uh, uh, you know, what we are uh, substituting is uh, also fossil fuel, uh, you know, uh, diesel, uh, which we are substituting, and uh, the difference is not that huge. But having said that, we are equalizing that or we are balancing that with clean energy. And uh, at this point in time, our production of uh, renewables is uh, the same as our production from coal. And we'd like to maintain that going forward. In fact, we'd like to have more uh, uh, energy based on renewables than coal. And for coal, we're looking at alternatives to use 
uh, convert it to diesel uh, and use it as uh, uh, that, uh, you know, convert it as diesel to reduce our import uh, bill for diesel. Um, apart from that, we are investing very heavily on, in the environment. In Tharparkar alone, uh, what we've done is that every acre uh, of land, they need to have, I don't know, 10 trees, something, and we're planting those trees. We have a very aggressive mangrove plantation drive in the province. Uh, we've got a huge coastal belt and uh, mangroves, um, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, plantation, we've increased by several. We've got the uh, Guinea's record for the most mangroves planted in a single day, uh, and we beat our own record. And now we've stopped, you know, till somebody else takes over, then we'll start another drive. So, you know, we have the most uh, trees planted in a day. Uh, we have the record for the highest and the second highest at the time being. So, yes, we are very well aware of the environmental effects, uh, but uh, our coal, the energy production from coal, even now, would be about 2 or 3 percent, 2 or 3 percent of our total energy requirement, and maybe a little more than that, compared to almost, uh, you know, more, more than 50 percent in the developed world. Uh, so, yes, you know, we know that it'll create problems, and we've been sufferers. We've recently suffered because of climate. Uh, uh, but, you know, we don't have many alternatives for uh, energy production. Uh, and as I said, you know, we're trying to mitigate the effects by going into clean energy and improving the environment. But I take your question as a valid question that, yes, we need to be aware of this. Uh, if you can answer the second question, uh, Sir. So, second question was regarding expenditure on our communication network, uh, typically roads. So whether it has been done by the provincial government itself or it is being done with the help of the federal government. Uh, this expenditure on roads and building roads, it is has been entirely done by the provincial government itself. We get uh, our share uh, from the federal government the taxes, the, all the taxes, primarily or most of the taxes have been are being collected by the federal government, and they are divided amongst the provinces according to a set share. We get our share and we utilize it uh, as decided by the provincial legislature. So this effort on the roads is being done entirely by the provincial government. Sir, thank you very much for taking the question from the group. I know we have already taken or short the time uh, for the meeting. Thank you very much for taking the questions from the group, sir. Thank all of you for being here. And I hope you have a good time in Pakistan and you take back good memories from our country. Thank you. <laughs>